Well, this morning the service is going to be a bit different in terms of our schedule, and in just, just a moment we're going to do something we've never done before, and no one's ever done before in a context like this. We're going to have a conversation with an astronaut on the International Space Station. I want you to know just a couple of things about him as uh, NASA is getting the hookup finalized here. Colonel Jeff Williams is the longest serving United States astronaut in space in history. In 2002, he commanded a nine day uh, expedition as an aquanaut, as an astronaut. He boarded the International Space Station in 2006 and also had his first long duration stay as a part of what was known as Expedition 13. In 2009, he returned to the International Space Station as a part of Expedition 2122. On March the 18th, 2016, he was redeployed to the International Space Station for a third time as part of Expedition 4748. He has underseen the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module and led one spacewalk. Uh, I heard the other morning as I woke up on the BBC that Colonel Jeff Williams was getting ready to, uh, to take a spacewalk and uh, people around the world were paying attention to the live feed from NASA at that time. In a matter of days, he's going to be undertaking yet another spacewalk. I'm going to interrupt whatever I'm saying to stop when uh, NASA gives me the signal and I can talk more about him later. But the thing I want you to know as a dear brother in Christ uh, who's been a friend to Southern Seminary for some time is going to be speaking to us from a distance we've never heard before. And so if we're ready, would you please say hello as you can to Colonel Jeff Williams on the International Space Station. I'm going to ask that. Go right ahead. We can hear you now. It's good to be with you. Oh, the great to be with you here, Dr. Moeller. You mentioned the greetings from the planet, uh, from home planet. I have a week to go, a little over a week to go, and I, I look forward to coming home to the planet. And uh, the things I tell folks, you land in Kazakhstan after being up here for six months, even though you're halfway in the world in the middle of nowhere, it feels like. Colonel Williams has sent us uh, photographs of this campus from the International Space Station, which is an aerial view uh, we had never seen before. It humbles us putting that into perspective. Colonel Williams, I, Tell us right now, can, can you tell us where you are at the moment? <laughs> we just passed, actually we did a pass over North America and uh, hitting the coast around Baja, California and up over the Great Lakes and then uh, the eastern part of Canada and currently we're over the North Atlantic heading towards Spain and then down over Africa. We have seen some of your photographs. I, I see you have your camera there at hand. How, what, what is the most amazing thing you have seen and been able to document with that camera? No question to uh, answer because there are so many amazing things. Everything from the features on the Earth, the atmospheres, to uh, weather patterns, to the sunsets and sunrises. Uh, it's seeing the aurora over both the north and south on occasion, seeing what we call noctilucent clouds, which are very rarely seen, which are uh, uh, just uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, and just the list goes on and on. It has meant so much for us to see the photographs that you have taken. In your, uh, in, in, in your own personal belief, what are you seeing when you look at planet Earth? I get questions like that uh, often, and sometimes the question, does, does this uh, experience change my view of God or my knowledge of God or deepen my um, understanding of God? And the short answer to that is no. My personal belief, of course, I'm a, a Christian like, like I'm sure most, if not all of you, uh, so I believe in uh, God. I believe in Him as Creator and Redeemer uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, so when I look out the window and I see this, all of the elements of what you would imagine you would see with a creative work by an infinite God. Uh, you see the design, you see the beauty, you see the purpose, you see all of those elements, you see order uh, in all of the details. Um, and so that's what I see when I look out the window. When, when you look at 
creation looking downward at planet Earth, you, you see your home. But from the space station, you're also able to see the other way. Uh, oh, oh, what, what does that tell you about the expansiveness of, uh, of God's creation? The expansiveness uh, uh, is beyond our comprehension. It goes, I mean, we have a hard time comprehending the word infinity, uh, but certainly the expanse of creation uh, is uh, infinity as far as we can understand it. But yet you look down at the planet and you see this marvelous, unique place that we call Earth, uh, uniquely designed, uh, uniquely purposed uh, in the place that is provisioned and ordered uh, to uh, sustain life. Uh, the place that we call home. It's very unique. And, and every astronaut that comes up here um, never, uh, 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 everyone always ends up focus, putting the focus back on Earth, even though we can see so far and see the vastness of the, of the galaxies beyond. How far from Earth are you at the moment in orbit? Approximately only 250 miles uh, above the Earth. That's our or orbital altitude. We orbit the Earth every 90 minutes, so that's 17,500 miles an hour. 250 miles is not that far away, but it puts us above the atmosphere so that we can stay in, uh, in orbit. Well, that 250 miles may not seem like much to you, but it, uh, we can plot it out going straight up. That's a rather amazing fact. You arrived at the International Space Station having taken off from a Russian Soyuz rocket. I just have to say, I want to know what that was like. Yeah. It lifts off from the launch pad, you know something significant just happened in your life. It's, it's an amazing ride. For those of us old enough to remember the, the ABCDE tickets in Disneyland and, and Disney World, uh, it's well beyond an e-ticket ride. Uh, it's uh, a, a, about, almost nine minutes or so uh, uh, for the ascent, uh, and you go from sitting still on the earth and you get launched, uh, leap, you leap off the launch pad. Of course, you feel a couple Gs in the early parts of the ascent. Uh, but if up to four Gs as the rocket gets lighter, we burn the fuel, and that's sustained uh, for that uh, several minutes, uh, up to five minutes. And then you get to uh, zero G when the engine cuts off in orbit. You realize you're in orbit. You look out the window. You no longer see blue sky by that time, but you just see the blackness of space and then the beauty of the planet below. And you can also pick out, of course, the, the atmosphere at the limb of the, uh, of the planet Earth. Colonel Williams, speaking of the blackness of space, the images of those spacewalks are even more impressive to me. When you leave the International Space Station and tethered just with some cables and tubes, you go out to do that work in the vastness of space. In your own personal belief, what does that mean to you? Not just as an astronaut, but as a human being. Certainly, it's the most exciting thing we do up here. It's the most challenging physically and mentally. It's the hardest thing we do. Uh, but it, it's an amazing experience. It's one thing uh, to be inside here and look out the window and view the elements of, of God's creation in deep space as well as the planet. It's quite another thing to go outside and now you are a satellite yourself inside this, this suit um, that is sustaining your life. And you can see through that full face visor, the, not only the vastness and the majesty of the globe itself, uh, deep into the space. So it, again, it just deepens uh, the comprehension, the observation of what we know through Scripture of the, the, the amazing uh, creative work of God. And it just, it, it, as I said before, it's just an incredibly humbling, humbling experience. You also have to have a great deal of faith in a team with whom you're working there on the space station and a vast team covering several nations in terms of the ground team here on Earth, that, uh, that, that requires a lot of confidence as well. And I do have the utmost confidence in the teams. You've probably seen it in the news where NASA, as, a, as an agency, speaking of the, of, of the American agency, the American part of this partnership is uh, the, the most popular place to work in. And, and morale within the workforce is the highest among 
uh, government agencies. And that's true. We, we work in an incredible team, people that believe in the mission, that uh, put their life into it, heart and soul. Everybody understands that lives are on the line. Uh, we have a, a good process. Of course, we've had some very difficult uh, hardships that we've gone through in the past with loss of, of life and, and loss of spacecraft. Uh, we've learned from that. We continue to keep the focus, and I do have a, a very high level of confidence in the team. And that, goes, that extends to the international partnership. Uh, that's very unique, I think, in this program we call the International Space Station. Colonel Williams. What do you miss most from planet Earth while you're spending the longest term of any American on the International Space Station in an orbit? What do you miss here? Well, it's easy. Uh, it's, it's relationships. And of course, our, for most of us, our first relationships is with our immediate family and, and my wife. Uh, she's the hero in this story because she has put up with, uh, endured the long periods of time three long trips uh, up here now, uh, well over 500 days for her. Uh, th and this is all under her control. This is what I go off and do. And she has to endure what I think is a, is a, a continuous amount of stress integrated over a long period of time. We have a very close uh, relationship uh, and we miss each other. Um, and that's, of course, what I miss the most. I'm also a grandfather now. I've got four grandchildren. My youngest was born right before launch, so I have yet to meet him face to face. Uh, so uh, I, family is what I miss the most. And of course that's centered around relationships, our closest relationships, and as uh, believers we understand how central relationship is to the uh, human experience. Colonel Williams, it's such an honor to speak with you today and uh, it, it still staggers the imagination to, uh, to consider we're able to have this conversation with you in orbit right now. We're going to be praying for you and every member of your team, all your colleagues up there on the station as well, as you continue to serve and as you return. And we're going to be praying for your uh, safe and, uh, and wonderful return to your family and to that newly born grandchild. Uh, I want to ask you, just uh, as a personal message from you, speaking to a chapel filled with young people training for the Christian ministry and for Christian service, what would you want to say uh, to the young people gathered in this room that they're not going to hear except from 250 miles in orbit over the earth? So much I could say. And uh, knowing you, Dr. Mahler, and your ministry, and, and uh, I'll really listen to you right here. Up here. Uh, I know they're hearing many of the things that I would only uh, to deepen their understanding of of the scriptures to, to know what they believe uh, and to make that a lifelong journey to, to ultimately to know our Savior uh, personally. Uh, but then to answer his call, we're not for ourselves, we're not put up on planet Earth or off the planet for that matter for ourselves. We are each called various callings of life, whether it be callings of husband or wife or family members uh, to a vocation, no matter what we're doing in the church or outside the church. Uh, so it's important to deepen the understanding of that and then to, to uh, comprehend uh, this comprehensive providential ordering of our lives for his purpose and to trust and grow in our lives uh, of that and in response to that call. So those are just a couple of comments that come to mind with that question. Colonel Williams, we thank you for your service on behalf of this nation and on behalf of all the nations of the world since it's the International Space Station. And uh, we want you to know how thankful we are for you, how proud we are that you are on this team and, uh, and representing all of us in this way. And uh, we just want you to hear prayer and affirmation, thankfulness and, uh, and Christian love from brothers and sisters in Christ here on planet Earth. Uh, to, in Christ, 250 miles means nothing. But across that space, we want you to know how much we appreciate the fact you've taken this time with us today. Thank you very much. The honor is mine. I uh, appreciate your ministry of not only the, the faculty and staff there, but also the students and the faith and the faith what's in their future. So thank you for your prayers and, and your encouragement, your ongoing encouragement to, to both uh, my, uh, to me and my extended family for that matter. God bless you, sir. Please join me in thanking Colonel Jeff Williams.
God bless you. Thank you.